sekarang rasanya sangat panas. Kami seperti nggak bertahan lagi untuk hidup di daerah yang semakin panas ini. Makanan di rumah hanya cukupnya dua hari begitu. Tapi apa sih nanti ini kalau habis? These are the stories of people living on the front lines of climate change. The risks and threats of climate change are real. This is not just some kind of projection. This is happening right now. Communities across Asia are constantly fighting a daily battle. Intense heat waves are killing thousands. Prolonged droughts are destroying livelihoods. Nắng khoảng tháng nữa chắc giường nhà mình chắc còn chừng 15 20 cây là dữ chứ không nữa. Mega cities have run out of water. Nghe office lên xô luôn à. Adik nào mà yết đi bỏ nó, adik chỉ bưởi chín bỏ nó, để rồi cái anh cả bỏ nó adik chỉ bỏ nó về rồi. While people's homes sink into the sea. Yo neng cái này mà, mà tôi vừa biết yes neng cái này. This is 24 hours in the lives of those worst affected. Their resilience in the face of crisis. Sebenarnya masyarakat itu kalau diberi solusi untuk soal yang dialami, dia bisa melakukan lebih daripada apa yang kita pikirkan. This is the longest day. As dawn breaks, local fruit farmers in the Mekong Delta are already gathering outside the government's water distribution center. Their most basic need is under ration due to prolonged drought lasting over three months. Mấy sáng là chị ra chị tanh thủ tận đợi mấy anh mấy chị á gửi nạp phiếu đặng hồi mình tranh thủ mình lấy chớ sớm chứ để hồi có xe lôi đổ chặt khó chen rồi vô nó xe mình xe con khó chen vô nó không có nó chặt một tuần là chị đi dám cả sáu ngày luôn <cười> suốt luôn không có nghỉ <cười> Lê Tin Nhu has been a durian farmer for the last three years, but this season she faces a race to keep her small farm alive. This water supply is her family's final lifeline. The water is free, but it's strictly allocated on how much land each farmer owns. Mỗi ngày thì trung bình là khoảng là từ 100 đến 150 hộ là nhận nước ở đây. Ai đi trước thì lấy trước, ai đi sau thì lấy sau, vẫn đảm bảo cho ổn định thực tự. Là đối với hàng mặn thì năm nay đối với Phú Hồng á, là khốc liệt. Bản thân tôi là 40 năm rồi, chưa thấy mà hàng mặn khốc liệt. 2016 thì nó chỉ ở mức 2, hết 2, 2,3 gram thôi. Nhưng mà hiện giờ nó nó đang lúc cao là 7,8.
gần 8 8 g tên tên lết. Known as the Kingdom of Fruits, over 1.2 million people in Tiangang province rely on the fertile land for their main source of income. Every season, the farmers deal with saline contamination, a natural process in the delta, where salty seawater mixes with freshwater rivers. But this year, rising sea levels and prolonged drought has caused the contamination to last for three months longer than normal, at an intensity never seen before. 310 square miles of fruit trees, an area larger than Singapore, is under threat from water shortage. Chứ bà con nông dân ở đây người ta cũng không ngờ vậy nó kéo dài tới mấy tháng vậy nó hạn mặn nữa. Ở năm rồi có 1 tháng á, năm nay nó đưa lên mấy tháng nữa đâu có ngờ vậy đâu mà chuẩn bị đập nước đâu. Declaring a state of emergency, the local government has begun transporting vast supplies of fresh water into the region from further upstream. Đó bình thường bình quân thì chỉ đi chừng 15 16 chuyến mấy bữa ông xã chị cũng có đi thì chị đi cố gắng đi cả 20 21 chuyến gì đó. Nếu mệt mà chị thấy cây tái khô vậy làm chị khỏe hơn chị cũng có mệt cố gắng người đi. Most other farmers rent large rickshaws to transport all their water in one go. But Nio chooses to make 15 trips a day on her bike to save the little money her family has. Hai khối, hai thùng xe lôi vậy nặng trăm rưỡi. Nói chung là nó cũng vừa túi tiền chứ không có mắc mà như người ta trả được chị. Lúc gài kinh tế của chị không có gì bán hết trơn. Chị mới nói ảnh gán em chở và ảnh đòi bỏ cuộc chị nó thôi. <cười> tới đâu tới vậy đó. Lỡ nó có chết em cũng mát ruột nó chứ giờ em đeo tới đâu tới suốt vậy đó. Chừng nào mưa thôi chừng nào em hết sức em làm không nổi em sẽ nghỉ. ta đang gặp một cái thử thách rất lớn về cái an ninh nguồn nước. Mà một khi an ninh nguồn nước bị đe dọa thì cái an ninh lương thực nó sẽ bị đe dọa theo. Bởi vì nó làm thay đổi à, những khí cậy, những thu nhập, sinh kế và đồng thời nó ảnh hưởng tới sức khỏe cũng như những cái dòng dịch chuyển dân cư lao động. Rice yields across the Mekong Delta are predicted to drop as much as 50% by 2100 putting farmers' livelihoods under immense pressure and potentially sending shockwaves through the whole region. Là cái lượng lương thực ở trong khu vực này xuất ra thế giới cũng rất là lớn. Như vậy là khi mà cái sản xuất gạo ở đồng bằng sông Cửu Long mà bị bị thiếu hụt hay là giảm sút đi đó, nó sẽ ảnh hưởng tới vấn đề cái cản cân mà xuất nhập khẩu uh, lương thực ở trong khu vực châu Á. Every morning, basically here, people wake up very early. Our day starts very, very early, like, like by 6, 6.30. And then uh, we start to first check the animal. These are small. And we look at the health of the shrimp to see that uh, these shrimps, are they eating? Uh, how's the skin? How's the gut? So we learn by experience. Ten years ago, Dr. Fashad decided to leave his corporate job and turn his hand to indoor farming. Since then, he has built up his independent company to become the first intensive urban farm in Singapore, using water sustainably. So these are the tanks that we have, like a baby shrimp. This is one of them. Uh, we have almost about two million shrimp larvae. And uh, we have fish also. We have here baby grouper. Uh, about 5,000 grouper inside this. Maybe I show you this tank. 
Yeah, these are all baby shrimp. These are somewhere about 40 days. These are very healthy shrimp. Singapore imports 90% of its fruits, vegetables, and fish. The island nation is particularly vulnerable to changes in international food trade, as poor harvests can mean countries reduce exports to protect their domestic food supply. Dr. Fashad's ambition is that his shrimp will provide Singapore with a secure food source. I personally believe that for a nation like us, very small, with a very limited resources in terms of land and food production and to be 100% depend on the outside, it's not very safe. That's why indoor farming, I believe, is the future of the aquaculture. It's a simple reason, because you can set up this everywhere. The impact of the global warming on the indoor farming, it would not be too much because you're separating yourself from the whole ecosystem surrounding. But here too, water supply is a major issue. The World Resources Institute ranks Singapore as one of the most water-stressed countries in the world. But Dr. Fashad has developed a natural system to prolong the life of his water. Yeah, I want to show you our water and uh, you can see our water is a green, and this is because we're mimicking the nature. We try to create an environment that it's use all the elements that exist in the ocean. By doing this, we lower our cost of water uh, treatment because uh, green water means you have algae, you have phytoplankton. What the phytoplankton does, they absorb all the ammonium. The green system will allow us to maintain and hold the water much, much more longer than the average outdoor farm. The farm may have developed a system to preserve their water, but the demand for drinking water in Asia's cities is getting more and more extreme. In Jakarta, people are forced to do whatever it takes to get their daily supply. In one of Asia's most densely populated cities, the search for clean water is a full-time job. Yeah, Ada enam lima mal dah pekerjaan. Saya mah dari dulu ke emang emang memegang pantai kan, pantai keng air. Working together for the last three years, father and son team Nemim and Yujang have dug thousands of water wells in the east suburbs of Jakarta. They make just thirty-five US dollars profit per job, but a steadily growing population has led to increased demand. Saya itu hampir daerah sini tuh hampir semua itu ngebornya ke saya gitu. Karena di sini tidak dapat sumber air. Seperti pegunung air pegunungan atau pam di sini tidak terdapat. Jadi kita nyari sumber air sendiri gitu masing-masing warga. Air biasanya kalau warga di sini itu bilangnya mantek air gitu. Saya mau ke perumahan Wisma soal ada panggilan satu orang nih. Tahu nih keras apa enggaknya soal di, di situ mah lokasinya daerahnya batu. Berangkat. Dah rapi dah. Hmm. 
Only 30% of Jakarta residents are connected to the official water system. Millions of households and commercial businesses are forced to privately pump fresh water from aquifers deep beneath the city. Currently, the central Jakarta are pretty much covered in terms of access to clean water. There's still a problem on the outskirts of Jakarta. Uh, there are residential areas that do not have access to this clean water that is provided by government. So for those areas, they actually have no choices than to extract groundwater. Kalau untuk saat ini sih pengeboran air di wilayah sini masih 12 meter itu masih dapat air. Terasa beratnya karena ngebor ini cuman makanya bor manual bukan gearbox, bukan mesin. Jadi kita ngandelin tenaga per individu. Most of Jakarta's shallow groundwater is contaminated from leaking septic tanks. But despite this, a private well is still seen as the most cost-effective and reliable source of water. Nah, untuk daerah Jakarta ini ya semakin kemari ya semakin parah. Ditercemar saking banyaknya penduduk. Sebagai itu kesulitan sama air. Mungkin kalau kita ke pump kan kita akan ngeluarin biaya double. Kita harus beli lagi. Kalau kita gali sumur, bor kan cuma sekali bikin aja. As the morning sun heats up, Neo is completing her fifth journey back and forth from the water collection point. Bọn này bình thường mới đậu nặng, ginh ghét rồi nó cũng quen. Chứ bà con nông dân đây thấy có nước là là cũng như là cơm gạo luôn nó quý báo vậy đó. Quý hiếm. Lúc nước mặn bữa hả mới vừa hẹn là mình sẽ kêu ảnh kêu mua cái hồ này. Cho mình chừng khoảng 7 tấm mấy ngàn à chứ không có nhiều. Em gom á, 2 3 ngày lỡ em không đủ nước thì 2 3 ngày em bơm em phun bét bữa. Neo's family have been fruit farmers for generations, traditionally growing star fruit and sapodilla pears. But with ambitions for a better life for her only son, she decided to make a big change and focus all her efforts on the more profitable durian. Con nhà mình sầu riêng nay mình trồng được 3 năm rồi, được 68 cây. Mình quyết định trồng xây cái cây sầu riêng là dân cứ như ta làm số đồng tiền lớn á, chị thấy sao bô này tiền lạc giặt nó có đồng tiền lớn chỉ tính gom vậy đằng sau này mình có tiền các nhà cửa nữa. The best quality durians can sell for more than 75 US dollars each. But they are notoriously water intensive fruits. Young trees like Neo's demand 8 liters of water a day or they will die in a matter of weeks. chết khoảng nửa luôn còn chừng bốn dòng ghìa đó chừng vài chục cây vậy đó. tình trạng này khoảng nắng khoảng tháng nữa chắc giường nhà mình chắc còn chừng mười lăm hai chục cây là giữ chứ không nữa nữa như mấy cây này nè để chết hết nè như bên đây khu vực bên đây như bên đây vòng vòng đây thì nó chết hết rồi cái lá nó khô nó nó úa đỏ đơn cái tái nó thì nó 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 bớt mũ rồi nó khô mũ không có lớn nữa. Vậy là chờ hái bán luôn chứ nó hết bự. 
Rồi ba cái nhỏ này không biết làm sao, nó lớn nổi mưa xuống thì nó còn bự bự chứ nó tẳng tẳng vậy nó không lớn nổi. Chi phí gì đó giờ bỏ ra chắc cũng cũng uh, cỡ vài chục triệu. <cười> bọng bét đồ tùm lum hết trơn, tại chị trẻ ống cho bọng nữa. Đúng rồi đó cũng tính mình kinh tế mình cho nó ổn định ba cái cây đó đâu nghĩ mà mặn mà nó chết dữ vậy rồi giờ phải bỏ ra đó durian farmers across Tien Gang province in South Vietnam face the same dilemma whether to hold firm or cut their losses and switch to less water intensive fruit just miles away, in the same region. Another durian farmer is drawing on all her resources and decades of experience to survive this season's water scarcity. Nguyen Ti Chi supports her younger sister and her 16 nieces and nephews, and she hopes they'll take over the farm when she retires. Ngoài này là cô để bơm nước và tưới cây cô. Đó thì hiện giờ cô cô có từ hôm mặn tới nay cô có múc ra xong cô có múc một chai nước. Để đây à, cho con cháu cô sau này nó biết là nó đừng có để xâm nhập mặn vô giường. Yeah. Cô sống này là mấy chục năm rồi. Cô quê quán cô xanh ở đây luôn. Thì từ cha xanh mẹ đẻ tới giờ rồi nay tôi sáu mấy tuổi tôi mới biết cái cảnh là nước mặn như vậy. Mấy năm trước thì tưới vẫn tự nhiên phong phú không có gì hết, chỉ có năm nay là quá nước mặn quá cao. Unlike other durian farmers, she doesn't rely on the government's supply of water. Her solution is to maintain a private pond, which she replenishes every year during the rainy season. Lúc trước có người có người không, rồi bây giờ người ta thấy sự kiên kinh tế cao người ta lắp lại bớt. Còn nguồn tôi thì để đặng tưới. Chỗ khác là người ta chủ quan, người ta không có nghĩ là theo đài, theo thời tiết thành ra họ chủ quan mấy cây mới bị thiệt hại vậy. Cô chăm cái vườn của cô rồi có 10 năm nữa. Và giữ cây của cô thì cô cũng gửi là cho cháu cô, cô thấy nó biết mần vườn và nó sống theo cái cách của cô. For some, it's already too late. The natural water source has run out. Once filled high with fresh water, prolonged drought has left Chennai's reservoirs at dangerously low levels. The mega city is at breaking point. Over two million residents rely on government tankers to deliver their only source of water. Yeah, obviously, it's all Water. 
Severe water shortage has forced the Chennai government to scramble for urgent solutions. They pay thousands of tankers to transport water from outside Chennai into the worst affected areas of the city. Communal water tanks like these have been installed in the poorest neighborhoods. The water is free, but up to 70 households must share the supply, and it often runs out within hours. <laughs> Fourteen of the world's 20 megacities are facing water shortage now. And this will only increase as urban populations across Asia skyrocket. In Chennai, in the absence of a sustainable supply, the only solution is for people to conserve the little water that is available. The crisis in Chennai paints a bleak picture for the future of Asia's megacities. And in Jakarta, the search for water has far larger implications. Barusan kita udah mulai kerja selama tiga jam. Cuman kita nemuin kendalanya yaitu air itu kotoran dari bawah itu nggak mau naik ke atas. Jadi ini udah pipa terakhir. Alhamdulillah, mudah-mudahan udah nemuin sumber air. Gitu. Itu. Father and son, Nemin and Yujang, are installing a well at a residential property, but they've hit a problem. At 12 meters down there's still no sign of water. If the workers don't strike water, the client will refuse to pay. Masalahnya perbedaannya ya dari air tadi, yang tadinya sumber air itu di sini mungkin banyak, biarpun dasar dangkal juga keluar air, sekarang semakin lama ya semakin dalam permukaan airnya. Ya galinya semakin dalam, tapi itu belum pasti airnya bagus. This search for water deeper and deeper underground is threatening Jakarta's very existence. Over-extraction of groundwater, combined with globally rising sea levels, is causing the entire city to sink. By 2050, North Jakarta, an area home to nearly 1.5 million people, will be uninhabitable. So we have sea level on one end and then groundwater extraction on the other end. So who is the bigger culprit? So if we look at the number, uh, the northern side of Jakarta is sinking about 25 centimeters per year, whereas the sea level rise issues is about 10 centimeters for three decades. So the difference is huge. Yes, we having impact of sea level rises, but what's happening locally from the extraction of groundwater really outweighs the sea level rise issue that we are facing right now. Menurut saya kalau untuk permukaan daerah Jakarta tanahnya semakin ambles itu enggak kalau dari akibat dari ngebor air ini, ngebor air, tapi dia itu disebabkan oleh banjir dan membawa mengikis tanah dasar di atasnya itu. 
Well, I don't think people are fully to blame because they need what they need to do. Uh, but we do need a better system to provide them with uh, more accessible, clean water, uh, more economical, so enabling conditions to move away from extracting groundwaters is the key here. It's lunchtime in Singapore, but work doesn't stop on Dr. Fashad's farm. No, 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 this one, the number three one. If the joint is not good, use this one. He's preparing for a large delivery of shrimp larvae, but he's worried that the lining in his new tank isn't secure and his water is too precious to lose. I'm talking about this. So this one, I think the sewing, this one, the sewing, yeah, I worry it's not good. So what you do, you just use from this, you can cut from this one and just put there and then do. So at least we finish one good and my HDB coming very soon. Now, boss, this one only to be good. Only here, only what leak. This one also. Only here leaking. Nah, other Others is okay. Other one is okay. I will knock your head I, 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 Anything leak, yeah, I, I, you know what I do, yeah. We have to finish the latest. Everything must be ready by this month because we have shrimp coming in. We have a shrimp to fill up all this tank. Otherwise, we don't have space. We have almost 2 million larvae here. It's a 60, it's 2 million, we can harvest about 40 ton of shrimp. Stressful. Yes, very stressful. It's a lot of money. It's difficult. <laughs> there are currently 12 urban fish farms like this in Singapore, but that number is set to rise. And they're under pressure to increase productivity as they race to meet an ambitious national food security target. Singapore has a very big goal to achieve the 30% uh, required nutrition to produce locally by the 2030. How realistic is that? How is it achievable? I would just say a bit of a long stretch goal. Maybe we won't be able to achieve to the 30%, uh, but definitely we will achieve to much more better than what we have today. But you make sure it doesn't leak from the main one also. Huh? What happens if there's any? We have to take out the animal out and then repair it and put it back. If leak means the water will keep on going out. We're going to lose our pressure water. <laughs> it's the fact yeah, that yeah. we are in Singapore, yeah, yeah. there is no water excess for us. Every drop of water here, we can't. We can't just throw the water out. So we try to reuse the water. Some of our water, maybe we have it for almost a year. If I tell this one to my friend, the farmer friend in other country, they will laugh, you know, but it's true. We really, really never throw the water. Little bit, little bit. No, that little bit also should not leak. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. While Nyo races to get enough water before the day is up, Chi faces a struggle to make sure her durians deliver a profit. Even if their durian trees survive, water shortage often leaves farmers with bland or unripe fruits. If the quality isn't good enough, the buyer could offer just one third of the going rate. Cái cuốn mà giống như cái này mà mình gờ nó héo á, là bên đây tụi con chỉ mua hàng kem thôi, nên là không thể mua cái hàng đóng được. Con chỉ để là mới mua được. Người ta cũng vô như người ta hỏi là mình bán bao nhiêu, thì mình mới nói là 
tôi bây giờ cái giá là tôi dứt phát là 50 ngàn một ký Còn người ta hỏi bớt không bớt thì cái đó là tùy theo mình Mình nói à, bây giờ tôi dứt giá là 65 ngàn 60 ngàn cắt được thì cắt Rồi vụ hạn mặn kéo dài bà con mình sao rồi tôi không biết không? À, thời gian dài chắc cũng khó Tại vì cái cây dầu riêng nó khó phục hồi hơn những cái cây khác rất nhiều Nghĩa là dân mình đây khổ nhiều Vì nước mặn thì khổ nhiều theo câu độ là tương lai chắc mỗi năm mỗi vất vả hơn Bởi vì cái khí hậu này thấy nó bất bên lắm Như là mấy năm trước thì nó khác Có chỉ có năm nay rồi cô thấy năm nay vậy rồi Có thể nó kéo dài thời gian tới nữa chứ không phải vậy đâu Across Asia, climate change is threatening people's livelihoods and one of Singapore's most traditional industries is being forced to adapt. After digging for more than seven hours, Nemin and Yu Jiang have finally found what they were looking for. Kita cok, kalau sumber airnya udah nyampe, udah udah ada sumber air. Cuman ini kita kuras karena ini masih kotor, kita tunggu nyampe bersih. Saya kerja mengguluti pekerjaan ini ya cukup senang. Masalahnya ya ngebantu orang warga yang butuh sama air. Dia katakan kalau rumahnya nggak ada air kan repot juga. Sedangkan saya ya itu itu ngebantu lah untuk solusi keluarga mereka. Over the next decade. The pressure is on the Indonesian government to implement a sustainable water solution to ensure Jakarta's survival. Construction on a giant 32-kilometer seawall is underway, and they have announced a 40 billion US dollar program to expand piped water and sewage systems citywide. But in central Jakarta, there are already signs of damage. Nih, jembatan ini kan agak renggang dikit nih. Nih. Ini agak terbuka, agak ngangkat. Dikit lah, sedikit gangguan sedikit. Karena turunnya bumi airnya retak lah semuanya. Pada retak. Ya terus untuk sini buktinya kan bukti banget kalau ini kan bukti banget itu pada retak semua kan. Apa enggak turun bumi kita? Ini buktinya. Martono has been the attendant at this public wash house since it first opened 30 years ago. Yang namanya bangunan di sini saya tahu semua saya lihat lahir sini gede di sini. Kalau retak-retak ini ya paling 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 ya ya 10 tahun yang lalu lah ya. 5 tahun yang lalu lah. Ya kalau apalagi gedung-gedung ini banyak begini ya. Ada mereka kan buka pakai sumur bor semua yang dalamnya ratusan meter. Banyak gedung. Ya apa enggak terpengaruh dengan bumi kita turunnya bumi kita ini? As the city's foundations subside, cracks and sloping buildings are a common sight. Whole areas of northern Jakarta are already submerged, and severe floods are becoming increasingly frequent. Ya, itu yang kita khawatirkan takut blos gitu aja. Ya, itu kan sifatnya musibah ya buat kita ya. Ya, cuman, cuman perkiraan kita cuman begitu aja karena ya bangunan totally belum habis kita. The solution to this issue is first to uh, make people turn away from extracting groundwater so this can be having more access or cheaper access to fresh water that are not from groundwater. But we also need to increase the amount of rainwater that penetrates into the ground that will help the levels of groundwater and uh, bring back the, the levels of Jakarta.
depannya ya mungkin anak cucu ya mungkin ya nggak kebagian bisa ke nggak kebagian air karena terlalu banyaknya penduduk pencemaran polusi udara panas kalau waktu saya kecil itu di sini tuh masih asri tepatnya masih hijau lah sedangkan sekarang itu penduduk padat masalahnya yang kita alamin aja perbedaan dulu sama sekarang ya kerasa gitu bedanya Yeah, it's almost five o'clock. It's it's almost end of the day, but not for me, you know. So now I'm here to go and uh, have a discussion with my friend Christopher. He's a coastal farmer, so we are working with him on the helping on the nutrition and also improving their culture way of the you know cage farming they have. Good evening. Yeah, going to rain. Christopher has spent his life working at sea growing mainly grouper for local consumption. But this year, his yields have dropped, and he is struggling to make a living from his offshore fish farm. He's enlisted the help of Dr. Fashad to work out what the problem is. It's <laughs> So, when you say like they don't, the water quality not good, what do you mean? You refer to what? Sometimes the water is very bad. When you feed the fish, the water no good means the fish he won't eat. Oh, so okay, your definition means ah, they don't eat two, the fish. Days. Yeah. Ah, oh, two, three days. Two, three That's three not days. good, yeah. Unpredictable water quality, partly due to pollution from heavy industry on the waterway and globally higher sea temperatures, are causing Christopher's fish not to feed properly. In a cage farm, the only indication of the, you know, good farming is fish must eat. Because yeah. if fish doesn't eat, means they don't eat, they don't grow. The weather change, the raining change, the water change. So you can the connect all these things to the, I believe, to the global warming and climate change. To achieve Singapore's national food security Are target, farmers will have to be three times more productive than they currently are. One solution lies in using a sustainable fish feed. Our goal is, to create a protein for the human being. This is the food security. So the diet is very important. The diet that can give the fish the growth and also is a sustainable way. It means you don't utilize too much of the, you know, our resources to create this diet. That's what we are looking for. With a PhD specializing in aquatic ecology, Dr. Fashad has developed a high protein feed, especially for intense farming. And today, for the first time, He's trying it on Christopher's fish. Basically, floating feed that is a slow sinking is much better. Yes, much better than the quickly sinking. Yeah. He来的时候，我都很高兴看到他可以有这种人好啊，没有进步可以可以学他学他一点东西吗？饭后我根本不知道啊，可以养。I'm doing this job for the past 27 years. I have a passion for it. When I see the success, I enjoy it. When I can solve a problem, I feel good. As the day draws to a close, Nyo is completing her 15th and final trip to the water collection point. 
Không mơ giờ thì mệt chứ giờ cuối cùng là khỏe quá <cười> Được nghe nghỉ, được nghỉ khỏe Với chiều mình có nước tưới rồi, <cười> mát cây Giờ chị lấy xong chiếc này về cái đầu lo cơm, nước Rồi đồ đạc trong nhà cho con cái, chồng giặt chủ rồi ăn uống rồi bắt đầu nghỉ ngơi Lúc đó là cảm thấy khỏe rồi đó Rồi, chiếc này chứng cuối anh chị Cái động lực mà làm cho mình khỏe lên mà Thấy ai cũng chở cũng mệt như mình hết mà Mình cũng vậy gác phấn đấu lên mà chở Ăn cứu cho cây mình sống vậy đó Ai cũng đều chở người dân nào cũng vậy Đều tài y như mình Tới mưa cũng được nó gán đeo lại tới đâu tới In the Mekong Delta the government's emergency water has provided some respite for the farmers. But across Asia, the daily struggle to survive and adapt in the midst of a global water crisis will only get worse. The future success of the region may rely more than ever before on the resilience and commitment of farmers. Innovating and modernizing traditional practices we all can work together yeah. and hand to hand and everything will change according to the needs of the time. And that's gonna be the future. And preparing the next generation for the challenges that lie ahead. Sau này cho tụi bay là nó gương theo tao vậy đó. Không lo mà cây trái rồi như vậy nè. Cho mình được đạt, biết không? For these people, the longest day will begin again tomorrow, and the next, as they continue to live their lives on the front lines of climate change.